through the entire Bible in 90 days, and uh, we are on Leviticus 4, so let's begin. The Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, when anyone sins unintentionally and does what is forbidden in any of the Lord's commands, if the anointed priest sins, bringing guilt on the people, he must bring to the Lord a young bull without defect as a sin offering for the sin he has committed. He is to present the bull at the entrance to the tent of meeting before the Lord. He is to lay his hand on its head and slaughter it there before the Lord. Then the anointed priest shall take some of the bull's blood and carry it into the tent of meeting. He is to dip his finger into the blood and sprinkle some of it seven times before the Lord in front of the curtain of the sanctuary. The priest shall then put some of the blood on the horns of the altar of fragrant incense that it that is before the Lord in the tent of meeting. The rest of the bull's blood he shall pour out at the base of the altar of burnt offering at the entrance to the tent of meeting. He shall remove all the fat from the bull of the sin offering, all the fat that is connected to the internal organs, both kidneys with the fat on them near the loins and the long lobe of the liver, which he will remove with the kidneys, just as the fat is removed from the ox, sacrificed as a fellowship offering. Then the priest shall burn them on the altar of burnt offering. But the hide of the bull and all its flesh, as well as the head and legs, the internal organs and the intestines, that is all the rest of the bull he must take outside the camp to a place ceremonially clean, where the ashes are thrown and burn it there in a wood fire on an ash heap. If the whole Israelite community sins unintentionally and does what is forbidden in any of the Lord's commands, even though the community is unaware of the matter, then when they realize their guilt and the sin they committed becomes known, the assembly must bring a young bull as a sin offering and present it before the tent of meeting. The elders of the community are to lay their hands on the bull's head before the Lord, and the bull shall be slaughtered before the Lord. Then the anointed priest is to take some of the bull's blood into the tent of meeting. He shall dip his finger into the blood and sprinkle it before the Lord seven times in front of the curtain. He is to put some of the blood on the horns of the altar that is before the Lord in the tent of meeting. The rest of the blood he shall pour out at the base of the altar of burnt offering at the entrance to the tent of meeting. He shall remove all the fat from it and burn it on the altar and do with this bull just as he did with the bull for the sin offering. In this way, the priest will make atonement for the community and they will be forgiven. Then he shall take the bull outside the camp and burn it as he burned the first bull. This is the sin offering for the community. When a leader sins unintentionally and does what is forbidden in any of the commands of the Lord his God, when he realizes his guilt and the sin he has committed becomes known, he must bring as an offering a male goat without defect. He is to lay his hand on the goat's head and slaughter it at the place where the burnt offering is slaughtered before the Lord. It is a sin offering. Then the priest shall take some of the blood of the sin offering with his finger and put it on the horns of the altar of burnt offering and pour out the rest of the blood at the base of the altar. He shall burn all the fat on the altar as he burned the fat of the fellowship offering. In this way, the priest will make atonement for the leader's sins and he will be forgiven. If any member of the community sins unintentionally and does what is forbidden in any of the Lord's commands, when they realize their guilt and the sin they have committed becomes known, they must bring as their offering for the sin they committed a female goat without defect. They are to lay their hands on the head of the sin offering and slaughter it at the place of the burnt offering. Then the priest is to take some of the blood with his finger and put it on the horns of the altar of burnt offering and pour out the rest of the blood at the base of the altar. They shall remove all the fat just as the fat is removed from the fellowship offering. And the priest shall burn it on the altar as an aroma pleasing to the Lord. In this way, the priest will make atonement for them and they will be forgiven. If someone brings a lamb as their sin offering, they are to bring a female without defect. They are to lay their hands on its head and slaughter it for a sin offering at the place where the burnt offering is slaughtered. Then the priest shall take some of the blood of the sin offering with his finger and put it on the horns of the altar of burnt offering and pour out the rest of the blood at the base of the altar. 
They shall remove all the fat, just as the fat is removed from the lamb of the fellowship offering. And the priest shall burn it on the altar on top of the food offerings presented to the Lord. In this way, the priest will make atonement for them for the sin they have committed, and they will be forgiven. Leviticus chapter 5. If anyone sins because they do not speak up when they hear a public charge to testify regarding something they have seen or learned about, they will be held responsible. If anyone becomes aware that they are guilty, if they unwittingly touch anything ceremonially unclean, whether the carcass of an unclean animal, wild or domestic, or of any unclean creature that moves along the ground, and they are unaware that they have become unclean, but then they come to realize their guilt, or if they touch human uncleanliness, anything that would make them unclean, even though they are unaware of it, but then they learn of it and realize their guilt, or if anyone thoughtlessly takes an oath to do anything, whether good or evil, in any matter one might carelessly swear about, even though they are unaware of it, but then they learn of it and realize their guilt, when anyone becomes aware that they are guilty in any of these matters, they must confess in what they have sinned against. As a penalty for the sin they have committed, they must bring to the Lord a female lamb or goat from the flock as a sin offering, and the priest shall make atonement for them for their sin. Anyone who cannot afford a lamb is to bring two doves or two, two, or two young pigeons to the Lord as a penalty for their sin, one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering. They are to bring them to the priest who shall first offer the one for the sin offering. He is to wring its head from its neck, not dividing it completely, and is to splash some of the blood of the sin offering against the side of the altar. The rest of the blood must be drained out at the base of the altar. It is a sin offering. The priest shall then offer the other as a burnt offering in the prescribed way and make atonement for them for the sin they have committed and they will be forgiven. If, however, they cannot afford two doves or two young pigeons, they are to bring as an offering for their sin a tenth of an ephith of the finest flour for a sin offering. They must not put olive oil or incense on it because it is a sin offering. They are to bring it to the priest who shall take a handful of it as a memorial portion and burn it on the altar on top of the food offering presented to the Lord. It is a sin offering. In this way, the priest will make atonement for them for any of these sins they have committed, and they will be forgiven. The rest of the offering will become or will belong to the priest, as is the case of the grain offering. The Lord said to Moses, When anyone is unfaithful to the Lord by sinning unintentionally in regard to any of the Lord's holy things, they are to bring to the Lord as a penalty a ram from the flock, one without defect and of the proper value in silver, according to the sanctuary shekel. It is a guilt offering. They must make restitution for what they have failed to do in regard to the holy things. Pay an additional penalty of a fifth of its value and give it all to the priest. The priest will make atonement for them with a ram as a guilt offering, and they will be forgiven. If anyone sins and does what is forbidden in any of the Lord's commands, even though they do not know it, they are guilty and will be held responsible. They are to bring to the priest as a guilt offering a ram from the flock, one without defect and of the proper value. In this way, the priest will make atonement for them for the wrong they have committed unintentionally, and they will be forgiven. It is a guilt offering. They have been guilty of wrongdoing against the Lord. Leviticus 6. The Lord said to Moses, If anyone sins and is unfaithful to the Lord by deceiving a neighbor about something entrusted to them, or left in their care, or about something stolen, or if they cheat their neighbor, or if they find lost property and lie about it, or if they swear falsely about any such sin that people may commit, when they sin in any of these ways and realize their guilt, they must return what they have stolen, or taken by extortion, or what was entrusted to them, or the lost property they found, or whatever it was they swore falsely about, they must make restitution in full. Add a fifth of the value to it, and give it all to the owner on the day they present their guilt offering. And a penalty, <clears throat> and as a penalty, they must bring to the priest, that is, to the Lord, their guilt offering, a ram from the flock, one without defect and of proper value, 
In this way, the priests will make atonement for them before the Lord, and they will be forgiven for any of the things they did that made them guilty. The Lord said to Moses, Give Aaron and his sons this command. These are the regulations for the burnt offering. The burnt offering is to remain on the altar hearth throughout the night till morning, and the fire must be kept burning on the altar. The priest shall then put on his linen clothes with linen undergarments next to his body and shall remove the ashes of the burnt offering that the fire has consumed on the altar and place them beside the altar. Then he is to take off these clothes and put on others and carry the ashes outside the camp to a place that is ceremonially clean. The fire on the altar must be kept burning. It must not go out. Every morning the priest is to add firewood and arrange the burnt offering on the fire and burn the fat of the fellowship offerings on it. The fire must be kept burning on the altar continuously. It must not go out. These are the regulations for the grain offering. Aaron's sons are to bring it before the Lord in front of the altar. The priest is to take a handful of the finest flour and some olive oil together with all the incense on the grain offering and burn the memorial portion on the altar as an aroma pleasing to the Lord. Aaron and his sons shall eat the rest of it, but it is to be eaten without yeast in the sanctuary area. They are to eat it in the courtyard of the tent of meeting. It must not be baked with yeast. I have given it as their share of the food offerings presented to me. Like the sin offering and the guilt offering, it is most holy. Any male descendant of Aaron may eat it. For all generations to come, it is his perpetual share of the food offerings presented to the Lord. Whatever touches them will become holy. The Lord also says to Moses, This is the offering Aaron and his sons are to bring to the Lord on the day he is atoned. He is anointed. A tenth of an ephith of the finest flour as a regular grain offering. Half of it in the morning and half in the evening. It must be prepared with oil on a griddle. Bring it well mixed and present the grain offering broken in pieces as an aroma pleasing to the Lord. The son who is to succeed him as anointed priest shall prepare it. It is the Lord's perpetual share and it is to be burned completely. Every grain offering of a priest shall be burned completely. It must not be eaten. The Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron and his sons, These are the regulations for the sin offering. The sin offering is to be slaughtered before the Lord in the place the burnt offering is slaughtered. It is most holy. The priest who offers it shall eat it. It is to be eaten in the sanctuary area, in the courtyard of the tent of meeting. Whatever touches any of the flesh will become holy. And if any of the blood is spattered, is spattered on a garment, you must wash it in the sanctuary area. The clay pot the meat is cooked in must be broken. But if it is, but if it is cooked in a bronze pot, the pot is to be scoured and rinsed with water. Any male in a priest's family may eat it. It is most holy. But any sin offering whose blood is brought into the tent of meeting to make atonement in the holy place must not be eaten. It must be burned up. Leviticus chapter 7. These are the regulations for the guilt offering, which is most holy. The guilt offering is to be slaughtered in the place where the burnt offering is slaughtered, and its blood is to be splashed against the sides of the altar. All its fat shall be offered, the fat tail and the fat that covers the internal organs, both kidneys with the fat on them and near the loins, and the long lobe of the liver, which is to be removed with the kidneys. The priest shall burn them on the altar as a food offering presented to the Lord. It is a guilt offering. Any male in a priest family may eat it, but it must be eaten in the sanctuary area, for it is most holy. The same law applies to both the sin offering and the guilt offering. They belong to the priest who makes atonement with them. The priest who offers a burnt offering for anyone may keep its hide for himself. Every grain offering baked in an oven or cooked in a pan or on a griddle belongs to the priest who offers it. And every grain offering, whether mixed with olive oil or dry, belongs equally to all the sons of Aaron. These are the regulations for the fellowship offering anyone may present to the Lord. If they offer it as an expression of thankfulness, then along with this thank offering, 
They are to offer thick loaves made without yeast and with olive oil mixed in, thin loaves made without yeast and brushed with oil, and thick loaves of the finest flour, well kneaded and with oil mixed in. Along with their fellowship offering of thanksgiving, they are to, pre to present an offering with thick loaves of bread made with yeast. They are to bring one of each kind as an offering, a contribution to the Lord. It belongs to the priest who splashes the blood of the fellowship offering against the altar. The meat of their fellowship offering of thanksgiving must be eaten on the day it is offered. They must leave none of it until morning. If, however, their offering is the result of a vow or of a free up, if any meat of the fellowship offering is eaten on the third day, the one who offered it will not be accepted. It will not be reckoned to their credit for it has become impure. The person who eats any of it will be held responsible. Meat that touches anything ceremonially unclean must be eaten, must not be eaten. It must be burned up. As for other meat, anyone ceremonially clean may eat it. But if anyone who is unclean eats any meat of the fellowship offering belonging to the Lord, they must be cut off from their people. Anyone who touches something unclean, whether human uncleanness or an unclean animal, or any unclean creature that moves along the ground, and then eats any of the meat of the fellowship offering belonging to the Lord, must be cut off from their people. The Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, Do not eat any of the fat of cattle. Anyone who eats the fat of an animal from which a food offering may be presented to the Lord must be cut off from their people. And wherever you live, you must not eat the blood of any bird or animal. Anyone who eats blood must be cut off from their people. The Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, Anyone who brings a fellowship offering to the Lord is to bring part of it as their sacrifice to the Lord. With their own hands, they are to present the food offering to the Lord. They are to bring the fat together with the breast and wave the breast before the Lord as a wave offering. The priest shall burn the fat on the altar, but the breast belongs to Aaron and his sons. You are to give the right thigh of the, your fellowship offerings to the priest as a contribution. The son of Aaron, who offers the blood and the fat of the fellowship offering, shall have the right thigh as his share. From the fellowship offerings of the Israelites, I have taken the breast that is waved and the thigh that is presented, and have given them to Aaron the priest and his sons, as their perpetual share from the Israelites. This is the portion of the food offerings presented to the Lord that were allotted to Aaron and his sons on the day they were presented to, the, to serve the Lord as priests. On the day they were anointed, the Lord commanded that the Israelites give this to them as their perpetual share for the generations to come. These then are the regulations for the burnt offering, the grain offering, the sin offering, the guilt offering, the ordination offering and the fellowship offering, which the Lord gave Moses at Mount Sinai in the desert of Sinai on the day he commanded the Israelites to bring their offerings to the Lord. Leviticus chapter 8. The Lord said to Moses, Bring Aaron and his sons, their garments, the anointing oil, the bowl for the sin offering, the two rams, and the basket containing bread made without yeast, and gather the entire assembly at the entrance to the tent of meeting. Moses did as the Lord commanded, and the assembly gathered at the entrance to the tent of meeting. Moses said to the assembly, This is what the Lord has commanded to be done. Then Moses brought Aaron and his sons forward and washed them with water. He put the tunic on Aaron, tied the sash around him, clothed him with the robe, and put the ephod on him. He also fastened the ephod with a decorative waistband, which he tied around him. He placed the breastpiece on him and put the Urim and Thummim in the breastpiece. Then he placed the turban on Aaron's head and set the gold plate, the sacred emblem, on the front of it, as the Lord commanded Moses. Then Moses took the anointing oil <clears throat> and anointed the tabernacle and everything in it, and so consecrated them. He sprinkled some of the oil on the altar seven times, anointing the altar and its utensils and the basin with its stand to consecrate them. He poured some of the anointing oil on Aaron's head and anointed him to consecrate him. Then he brought Aaron's sons forward, put tunics on them, tied sashes around them, and fastened caps on them as the Lord commanded Moses. 
He then presented the bull for the sin offering, and Aaron and his sons laid their hands on its head. Moses slaughtered the bull and took some of the blood, and with his finger he put it on all the horns of the altar to purify the altar. He poured out the rest of the blood at the base of the altar, so he consecrated it to make atonement for it. Moses also took all the fat around the internal organs, the long lobe of the liver and both kidneys and their fat, and burned it on the altar. But the bull, with its hide and its flesh and its intestines, he burned up outside the camp, as the Lord commanded Moses. He then presented the ram for the burnt offering, and Aaron and his sons laid their hands on its head. Then Moses slaughtered the ram and splashed the blood against the sides of the altar. He cut the ram into pieces and burned the head, the pieces and the fat. He washed the internal organs and the legs with water and burned the whole ram on the altar. It was a burnt offering, a pleasing aroma, a food offering presented to the Lord as the Lord commanded Moses. He then presented the other ram, the ram for the ordination, and Aaron and his sons laid their hands on its head. Moses slaughtered the ram and took some of its blood and put it on the lobe of Aaron's right ear, on the thumb of his right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot. Moses also brought Aaron's sons forward and put some of the blood on the lobes of their right ears, on the thumbs of their right hands, and on the big toes of their right feet. Then he splashed blood against the sides of the altar. After that, he took the fat, the fat tail, all the fat around the internal organs, the long lobe of the liver, both kidneys and their fat, and the right thigh. And from the basket of bread made without yeast, which was before the Lord, he took one thick loaf, one thick loaf with olive oil mixed in, and one thin loaf, and he put them on the fat portions and on the right thigh. He put all these in the hands of Aaron and his sons, and they waved them before the Lord as a wave offering. Then Moses took them from their hands and burned them on the altar on top of the burnt offering as an ordination offering, a pleasing aroma, a food offering presented to the Lord. Moses also took the breast, which was his share of the ordination ram, and waved it before the Lord as a wave offering, as the Lord commanded Moses. Then Moses took some of the anointing oil and some of the blood from the altar and sprinkled them on Aaron and his garments, and on his sons and their garments. So he consecrated Aaron and his garments and his sons and their garments. Moses then said to Aaron and his sons, Cook the meat at the entrance to the tent of meeting, and eat it there with the bread from the basket of ordination offerings, as I was commanded. Aaron and his sons are to eat it, then burn up the rest of the meat and the bread. Do not leave the entrance to the tent of meeting for seven days, until the days of your ordination are completed, for your ordination will last seven days. What has been done today was commanded by the Lord to make atonement for you. You must stay at the entrance to the tent of meeting day and night for seven days, and do what the Lord requires, so you will not die, for that is what I have been commanded. So Aaron and his sons did everything the Lord commanded through Moses. Leviticus chapter 9. <clears throat> On the eighth day, Moses summoned Aaron and his sons and the elders of Israel. He said to Aaron, Take a bull calf for your sin offering and a ram for your burnt offering, both without defect, and present them before the Lord. Then say to the Israelites, Take a male goat for a sin offering, a calf and a lamb, both a year old and without defect, for a burnt offering and an ox and a ram for a fellowship offering to sacrifice before the Lord, together with a grain offering mixed with olive oil. For today the Lord will appear to you. They took the things Moses commanded to the front of the tent of meeting, and the entire assembly came near and stood before the Lord. Then Moses said, This is what the Lord has commanded you to do, so that the glory of the Lord may appear to you. Moses said to Aaron, Come to the altar and sacrifice your sin offering, and your burnt offering, and make atonement for yourself and the people. Sacrifice the offering that is for the people, and make atonement for them as the Lord has commanded. So Aaron came to the altar and slaughtered the calf as a sin offering for himself. His sons brought the blood to him, and he dipped his finger into the blood and put it on the horns of the altar. The rest of the blood he poured out at the base of the altar. On the altar he burned the fat, the kidneys, and the long lobe of the liver from the sin offering, as the Lord commanded Moses. 
The flesh and the hide he burned up outside the camp. Then he slaughtered the burnt offering. His sons handed him the blood, and he splashed it against the sides of the altar. They handed him the burnt offering piece by piece, including the head, and he burned them on the altar. He washed the internal organs and the legs and burned them on top of the burnt offering on the altar. Aaron then brought the offering that was for the people. He took the goat for the people's sins, offering and slaughtered it, and offered it for a sin offering as he did with the first one. He brought the burnt offering and offered it in the prescribed way. He also brought the grain offering, took a handful of it, and burned it on the altar in addition to the morning's burnt offering. He slaughtered the ox and the ram as the fellowship offering for the people. His sons handed him the blood, and he splashed it against the sides of the altar. But the fat portions of the ox and the ram, the fat tail, the layer of fat, the kidneys, and the long lobe of the liver, these they laid on the breast. On the breast, and then Aaron burned the fat on the altar. Aaron waved the breast and the right thigh before the Lord as a wave offering, as Moses had commanded. Then Aaron lifted his hands toward the people and blessed them. And having sacrificed the sin offering, the burnt offering, and the fellowship offering, he stepped down. Moses and Aaron then went into the tent of meeting. When they came out, they blessed the people, and the glory of the Lord appeared to all the people. Fire came out from the presence of the Lord and consumed the burnt offering and the fat portions on the altar. And when all the people saw it, they shouted for joy and fell face down. Leviticus chapter 10. Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu, took their, cens their censers, put fire in them, and added incense. And they offered unauthorized fire before the Lord, contrary to his command. So fire came out from the presence of the Lord and consumed them, and they died before the Lord. Moses then said to Aaron, This is what the Lord spoke of when he said, Among those who, pro who approach me I will be proved holy. In the sight of all the people I will be honored. Aaron remained silent. Moses summoned Mishael and Elzaphan, sons of Aaron's uncle Uziel, and said to them, Come here. Carry your cousins outside the camp, away from the front of the sanctuary. So they came and carried them, still in their tunics, outside the camp, as Moses ordered. Then Moses said to Aaron and his sons, Eleazar and Ithamar, Do not let your hair become unkempt, and do not tear your clothes, or you will die, and the Lord will be angry with the whole community. But your relatives, all the Israelites, may mourn for those the Lord has destroyed by fire. Do not leave the entrance to the tent of meeting, or you will die, because the Lord's anointing oil is on you. So they did, as Moses said. So Aaron's sons, two of them, didn't follow directions as they were supposed to. Uh, the Lord consumed them with fire, and they were killed. And yet Aaron and the two sons serving with him as current priests we're not allowed to mourn for them, um, but the rest of the family was. So that's some pretty intense stuff. And thank the Lord that we have Jesus now, who is our once and for all sacrifice, so that we don't have to go through all of these different sacrifices that are listed here in the Levitical book. Then the Lord said to Aaron, You and your sons are not to drink wine or other fermented drink whenever you go into the tent of meeting, or you will die. This is a lasting ordinance for the generations to come, so that you can distinguish between the holy and the common, between the unclean and the clean, and so you can teach the Israelites all the decrees the Lord has given them through Moses. Moses said to Aaron and his remaining sons, Eleazar and Ithamar, Take the grain offering left over from the food offerings, prepared without yeast, and present it to the Lord, and eat it beside the altar, for it is most holy. Eat it in the sanctuary area because it is your share and your son's share of the food offerings presented to the Lord. For so I have been commanded. But you and your sons and your daughters may eat the breast that was waved and the thigh that was presented. Eat them in a ceremonially clean place. They have been given to you and your children as your share of the Israelites' fellowship offerings. The thigh... <clears throat> The thigh that was presented and the breast that was waved must be brought with the fat portions of the food offerings to be waved before the Lord as a wave offering. This will be the perpetual share for you and your children, as the Lord has commanded. 
When Moses inquired about the goat of the sin offering and found that it had been burned up, he was angry with Eleazar and Ithamar, Aaron's remaining sons, and asked, Why didn't you eat the sin offering in the sanctuary area? It is most holy. It was given to you to take away the guilt of the community by making atonement for them before the Lord. Since its blood was not taken into the holy place, you should have eaten the goat in the sanctuary area as I commanded. Aaron replied to Moses, Today they sacrificed their sin offering and their burnt offering before the Lord. But such things as this have happened to me. Would the Lord have been pleased if I had eaten the sin offering today? When Moses heard this, he was satisfied. Leviticus chapter 11. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Say to the Israelites, Of all the animals that live on land, these are the ones you may eat. You may eat any animal that has a divided hoof and that chews the cud. There are some that only chew the cud or only have a divided hoof, but you must not eat them. The camel, though it chews the cud, does not have a divided hoof. It is ceremonially unclean for you. The hyrax, though it chews the cud, does not have a divided hoof. It is unclean for you. The rabbit, though it chews the cud, does not have a divided hoof. It is unclean for you. And the pig, though it has a divided hoof, does not chew the cud. It is unclean for you. You must not eat their meat or touch their carcasses. They are unclean for you. So no eating pork. All right. That's an Old Testament law there. <laughs> of all the creatures living in the water of the seas and the streams, you may eat any that have fins and scales. But all creatures in the seas or streams that do not have fins and scales, whether among all the swarming things or among all the other living creatures in the water, you are to regard as unclean. And since you are to regard them as unclean, you must not eat their meat. You must regard their carcasses as unclean. Anything living in the water that does not have fins and scales is to be regarded as unclean by you. These are the birds you are to regard as unclean and not eat because they are unclean. The eagle, the vulture, the black vulture, the red kite, any kind of black kite, any kind of raven, the horned owl, the screech owl, the gull, any kind of hawk, the little owl, the cormorant, the great owl, the white owl, the desert owl, the osprey, the stork, any kind of heron, the hoopoe, and the bat. All flying insects that walk on all fours are to be regarded as unclean by you. There are, however, some flying insects that walk on all fours that you may eat. Those that have jointed legs for hopping on the ground. Of these, you may eat any kind of locust, katydid, cricket, or grasshopper. But all other flying insects that have four legs, you are to regard as unclean. So great, we can eat locusts, crickets, and grasshoppers. You will make yourselves unclean by these. Whoever touches their carcasses will be unclean till evening. Whoever picks up one of their carcasses must wash their clothes, and they will be unclean until evening. Every animal that does not have a divided hoof or that does not chew the cud is unclean for you. Whoever touches the carcasses of any of them will be unclean. Of all the animals that walk on all fours, those that walk on their paws are unclean for you. Whoever touches their carcasses will be unclean till evening. Anyone who picks up their carcasses must wash their clothes and they will be unclean till evening. These animals are unclean for you. Of the animals that move along the ground, these are unclean for you. The weasel, the rat, any kind of great lizard, the gecko, the monitor lizard, the wall lizard, the skink, and the chameleon. Of all those that move along the ground, these are unclean for you. Whoever touches them when they are dead will be unclean till evening. When one of them dies and falls on something, that article, whatever it uses, whatever its use, will be unclean, whether it is made of wood, cloth, hide, or sackcloth. Put it in water. It will be unclean till evening, and then it will be clean. If one of them falls into a clay pot, everything in it will be unclean, and you must break the pot. Any food you are allowed to eat that has come into contact with water from any such pot is unclean, and any liquid that is drunk from such a pot is unclean. Anything that one of their carcasses falls on becomes unclean. 
An oven or cooking pot must be broken up. They are unclean, and you are to regard them as unclean. A spring, however, or a cistern for collecting water remains clean, but anyone who touches one of these carcasses is unclean. If a carcass falls on any seeds that are to be planted, they remain clean. But if water has been put on the seed and a carcass falls on it, it is unclean for you. <coughs> if an animal that you are allowed to eat dies, anyone who touches its carcass will be unclean till evening. Anyone who eats some of its carcass must wash their clothes and they will be unclean till evening. Anyone who picks up the carcass must wash their clothes and they will be unclean till evening. Every creature that moves along the ground is to be regarded as unclean. It is not to be eaten. You are not to eat any creature that moves along the ground, whether it moves on its belly or walks on all fours or on, or on many feet, it is unclean. Do not defile yourselves by any of these creatures. Do not make for yourselves unclean by means of them or be made unclean by them. I am the Lord your God. Consecrate yourselves and be holy because I am holy. Do not make yourselves unclean by any creature that moves along the ground. I am the Lord who brought you up out of Egypt to be your God. Therefore be holy because I am holy. These are the regulations concerning animals, birds, every living thing that moves about in the water and every creature that moves along the ground. You must distinguish between the unclean and the clean, between living creatures that may be eaten and those that may not be eaten. Leviticus chapter 12. The Lord said to Moses, <clears throat> say to the Israelites, a woman who becomes pregnant and gives birth to a son will be ceremonially unclean for seven days just as she is unclean during her monthly period. On the eighth day, the boy is to be circumcised. Then the woman must wait 33 days to be purified from her bleeding. <clears throat> she must not touch anything sacred or go to the sanctuary until the days of her purification are over. If she gives birth to a daughter for two weeks, the woman will be unclean, as during her period. Then she must wait 60 days 66 days to be purified from her bleeding. When the days of her purification for a son or daughter are over, she is to bring to the priest at the entrance to the tent of meeting a year old lamb for a burnt offering and a young pigeon or a dove for a sin offering. He shall offer them before the Lord to make atonement for her and then she will be ceremonially clean from her flow of blood. These are the regulations for the woman who gives birth to a boy or a girl, but if she cannot afford a lamb, she is to bring two doves or two young pigeons, one for a burnt offering and the other for a sin offering. In this way, the priest will make atonement for her and she will be clean. Leviticus chapter 13. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, when anyone has a swelling or a rash or a shiny spot on their skin that may be a defiling skin disease, they must be brought to Aaron, the priest, or to one of the sons who is the priest. The priest is to examine the sore on the skin, and if the hair in the sore has turned white and the sore appears to be more than skin deep, it is a defiling skin disease. When the priest examines that person, he shall pronounce them ceremonially unclean. If the shiny spot on the skin is white but does not appear to be more than skin deep and the hair in it has not turned white, the priest is to isolate the affected person for seven days. On the seventh day, the priest is to examine them again. And if he sees that the sore is unchanged and has not spread in the skin, he is to isolate them for another seven days. On the seventh day, the priest is to examine them again. And if the sore has faded and has not spread in the skin, the priest shall, shall pronounce them clean. It is only a rash. They must wash their clothes and they will be clean. But if the rash does spread in their skin after they have shown themselves to the priest to be pronounced clean, they must appear before the priest again. The priest is to examine that person, and if the rash has spread in the skin, he shall pronounce them unclean. It is a defiling skin disease. When anyone has a defiling skin disease, they must be brought to the priest. The priest is to examine them, and if there is a white swelling in the skin that has turned the hair white, and if there is raw flesh in the swelling, it is a chronic skin disease, and the priest shall proclaim and pronounce them unclean. 
He is not to isolate them because they are already unclean. If the disease breaks out all over their skin, and so far as the priest can see, it covers all the skin of the affected person from head to foot, the priest is to examine them. And if the disease has covered their whole body, he shall pronounce them clean. Since it has all turned white, they are clean. But whenever raw flesh appears on them, they will be unclean. When the priest sees the raw flesh, flesh, he shall pronounce them unclean. The raw flesh is unclean. They have a defiling disease. If the raw flesh changes and turns white, they must go to the priest. The priest is to examine them. And if the sores have turned white, the priest shall pronounce the affected person clean. Then they will be clean. When someone has a boil on their skin and it's heal, and it heals, and in the place where the boil was, a white swelling or reddish white spot appears, they must present themselves to the priest. The priest is to examine it, and if it appears to be more than skin deep and the hair in it has turned white, the priest shall pronounce the person unclean. It is a defiling skin disease that has broken out where the boil was. But if, when the priest examines it, there is no white hair in it, and it is not more than skin deep and has faded, then the priest is to isolate them for seven days. If it is spreading in the skin, the priest shall pronounce them unclean. It is a defiling disease. But if the spot is unchanged and has not spread, it is only a scar from the boil, and the priest shall pronounce them clean. When someone has a burn on their skin and a reddish-white or white spot appears in the raw flesh of the burn, the priest is to examine the spot. And if the hair in it has turned white and it appears to be more than skin deep, it is a defiling disease that has broken out in the burn. The priest shall pronounce them unclean. It is a defiling skin disease. But if the priest examines it and there is no white hair in the spot, and if it is not more than skin deep and has faded, then the priest is to isolate them for seven days. On the seventh day, the priest is to examine that person. And if it is spreading in the skin, the priest shall pronounce them unclean. It is a defiling skin disease. If, however, the spot is unchanged and is not spread in the skin, but is faded, it is a swelling from the burn, and the priest shall pronounce them clean. It is only a scar from the burn. If a man or woman has a sore on their head or chin, the priest is to examine the sore. And if it appears to be more than skin deep, and the hair in it is yellow and thin, the priest shall pronounce them unclean. It is a defiling skin disease on the head or chin. But if, when the priest examines the sore, it does not seem to be more than skin deep, and there is no black hair in it, then the priest is to isolate the affected person for seven days. On the seventh day, the priest is to examine the sore, and if it has not spread, and there is no yellow hair in it, it does not appear to be more than skin deep, then the man or woman must shave themselves, except for the affected area, and the priest is to keep them isolated another seven days. On the seventh day, the priest is to examine the sore, and if it has not spread in the skin and appears to be no more, the priest shall pronounce them clean. They must wash their clothes, and they will be clean. But if the sore does spread in the skin after they are pronounced clean, the priest is to examine them. And if he finds that the sore has spread in the skin, he does not need to look for yellow hair. They are unclean. If, however, the sore is unchanged, so far as the priest can see, and if black hair has grown in it, the affected person is healed. They are clean, and the priest shall, the priest shall pronounce them clean. When a man or woman has white spots on the skin, the priest is to examine them. And if the spots are dull white, it is a harmless rash that has broken out on the skin. They are clean. A man who has lost his hair and is bald is clean. Good to know. If he has lost his hair from the front of his scalp and has a bald forehead, he is clean. But if he has a reddish white sore on his bald head or forehead, it is a defiling disease breaking out on his head or forehead. The priest is to examine him. And if the swollen sore on his head or forehead is reddish white like a defiling skin disease, the man is diseased and is unclean. The priest shall pronounce him unclean because of the sore on his head. Anyone with such a defiling disease must wear torn clothes, let their hair <clears throat> be unkempt, cover the lower part 
of their face and cry out, Unclean! Unclean! As long as they have the disease, they remain unclean. They must live alone. They must live outside the camp. As for any fabric that is spoiled with a defiling mold, any woolen or linen clothing, any woven or knitted material of linen or wool, any leather or anything made of leather, if the affected area and the fabric, the leather, the woven or knitted material, or any leather article is greenish or reddish, it is a defiling mold and must be shown to the priest. The priest is to examine the affected area and isolate the article for seven days. On the seventh day, he is to examine it, and if the mold has spread in the fabric, the woven or knitted material, or the leather, whatever its use, it is a persistent defiling mold. The article is unclean. He must burn the fabric, the woven or knitted material, of woolen, of wool or linen, or any leather article that has been spoiled. Because the defiling mold is persistent, the article must be burned. But if, when the priest examines it, the mold has not spread in the fabric, the woven or knitted material, or the leather article, he shall order that the spoiled article be washed. Then he is to isolate it for another seven days. After the article has been washed, the priest is to examine it again. And if the mold has not changed its appearance, even though it has not spread, it is unclean. Burn it no matter which side of the fabric has been spoiled. If when the priest examines it, the mold has faded after the article has been washed, he is to tear the spoiled part out of the fabric, the leather or the woven or knitted material. But if it reappears in the fabric, in the woven or knitted material, or in the leather article, it is a spreading mold. Whatever has the mold must be burned. Any fabric, woven or knitted material, or any leather article that has been washed and is rid of the mold must be washed again. Then it will be clean. These are the regulations concerning defiling molds in woolen or linen clothing, woven or knitted material, or any leather article for pronouncing them clean or unclean. We'll stop right there at chapter 13 of Leviticus. We'll pick back up with Leviticus chapter 14 next time. You guys have a great day and be blessed.